This is Tariff Sites. This video examines examples of algorithm pseudocode. It uses the pseudocode guidelines presented in a, another video. Our first algorithm that we will examine is computing the average. And we have four different scenarios here, four different algorithms based on different conditions. First, compute the average of two numbers. First statement, get A and B, gets the two numbers from the external environment into the variables A and B. Then, set the variable average to A plus B divided by 2 and print the average. Next, compute the average of a list of numbers using a while loop. Get n, which is the number of numbers in the list, the size of the list, and the variables n1 through nn. If, for example, n was 5, the variables used would be n1, n2, n3, n4, and n5. Set the variable sum to 0. Set the variable i to 1. i will be used as an index to index through the list of items. A while loop of repetition, while i is less than or equal to n, add n sub i to sum. With i starting at 1, the first time this loop is executed, we will add n sub 1 to sum, the first number in the list. Then add 1 to i, and continue checking and going through the list, adding each number consecutively to the sum. Finally, when that loop finishes, we set the variable average to sum divided by n and print average. This next version computes the average of a list using a repeat. We again get n and the numbers in the list. We set sum to 0, set i to 1, but this time instead of using a while we just say repeat n times. And each time we add n i to sum and then add 1 to i. Finally, set average to sum divided by n and print average. The last version looked at here for average is compute the average of a list of numbers using a function. We assume there is a function called average that will take a list of numbers as input and returns the average as output. So this is a modular approach where somewhere separate a f average function has been created and we can use it here uh, very succinctly in our code to make our code much simpler. First, this time we get the entire list. It says get list. And the comment here at the end of that line says the list of numbers. Then we set average to average of list. Average is the function. We pass it as input our list. It returns the average. We've named our variable here avg to distinguish it from the name of the function average. You can name your variables however you want as long as you try to keep them meaningful and not confusing. And finally print average. The next algorithm will be to print the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is shown here, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, etc. After the 1, 1, each number is the sum of the previous two numbers. 1 and 1 is 2, 1 and 2 is 3, 2 and 3 is 5. We look at any number in the list, like 21, it's the sum of the previous two, 8 and 13. So this algorithm, we will need variables for the previous number and the one previous to the previous. 
in mathematical notation, the Fibonacci number in position n is equal to the one in position n minus 1 plus the one in position n minus 2. Comment, print the first n Fibonacci numbers. First we get n, how many, how far in the sequence we want to print through. For example, if n was 7, be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We want to print all the way through 13. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. So it's a general purpose al algorithm, as they all should be, uh, depending only on the values from the external environment. That's what we get n, and it should work for any n uh, that's valid. First, a condition, conditional statement, if n is equal to 1, print 1 and stop. If n is equal to 2, print 1, print 1 and stop. We immediately take care of the, those simple cases. And when we get to this line here, this statement, this comment says we know that n has to be greater than or equal to 3 to get into this code down here. For those cases, we print 1, we print 1, and then set previous previous to 1 and previous to 1. These are two variables, the previous value and the previous to the previous value. And then we repeat n minus 2 times this loop. Set the variable current to previous previous plus previous and print current. And then set previous previous to previous and set previous to current. This would also be a, a good example to pick a value for n and play computer and see how this algorithm plays out. Next, some simple geometry algorithms. First, compute the perimeter of a rectangle. That's all the way around the outside. Get length and width. Set perimeter to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, and print perimeter. Compute the area of a circle. Get radius. Again, the variable name is up to the coder of the algorithm, the designer. You could have used r here as a variable for radius. Uh, radius is more explicit a little more verbose. It's a matter of style between r as a variable name or radius as a variable name. Set area to pi times r squared. pi is a variable which we assume here implicitly that it's going to have the value of pi which is an irrational number approximately 3.14 times the radius squared and print the area. Compute the distance between two points. Assume there is a square root function called sqrt. First we get the coordinates of the two points, x1, y1, the first point, and x2, y2, the second point. Set distance to be square root of, notice the parentheses around all this, these expressions here, the difference of the x's squared, parentheses around the difference of the x's, plus the difference of the y's squared. That's the distance formula, and print the distance. Next, some examples of an algorithm for computing a maximum of a set of numbers. We have different scenarios here. The first one, compute the max of two numbers. Get our two numbers, get a and b. If a is greater than b, print max equals a. And of course, the value of a will be printed out. Else, print max equals b. Printing max equals in the value of b. An alternative algorithm for the max of two numbers, get the two numbers, a and b, set the variable max to a. If, if b is greater than a, set max to b. And finally, print max equals the value of max. 
Compute the max of three numbers. This one uses nested selection statements, nested if else's. First, get the three numbers A, B, and C. Then, if A is greater than B, we will do this block of code here, the if block. Otherwise, we'll do the else block down here. Inside each block is another if else. If A is greater than B, then we look to see if A is greater than C. If so, the max is A. Otherwise, the max is C. Down here, under when A is not greater than B, this else clause, if B is greater than C, print max is B, else print max is C. Next, compute the max of a list of numbers using a while loop. This time a list of numbers. First we get the variable n, which tells how many numbers will be in this list, and then the variables n1 through nn are used to represent each of the numbers in the list. For example, if n is 3, then it would be n1, n2, and n3 would be the variables used. If n is 10, be n1, n2 through n10. Set max to n1. Set the index variable i, i is typically used as an index, to 2. While i is less than or equal to n, if n sub i is greater than max, set max to n sub i. So we're looking through as i has the index variables, oh, and then add 1 to i. So as the index variables increased here by adding 1 to it in the loop, and then seeing if we're still within the, the items, we look at the next item in the loop. Initially, we're looking at set i equal to 2, so n2, and then n3, because we initialized max to n1. Again, you could play computer on this and watch how this algorithm plays out. And finally, print max equals max. Our last example assumes we have a function called maximum that takes a list as input and returns the maximum. We get our list and the comment says the list of numbers. This is a data structure variable list. It has a list as its value. And then we set max, the variable max, to maximum of the list. The parentheses indicates that we're passing this list to this maximum function, which is coded somewhere else, a separate algorithm, and we're making use of it here to make the code much easier to understand. Print max. Our last example algorithm is reversing a list. We will reverse the order of numbers in a list. Whatever their order they're in, they'll be reversed. The first algorithm here, the first version, is uses the technique of making a copy of the list first. This will use double the memory. We'll have our original list and a, a whole other version of the list in memory. These are comments right here. The variable t indexed by i, ti's, will be the new temporary list in reverse order. t for temporary. First, we get n, the size of our list, and our list of numbers, n1 through nn. Next, this comment says we're going to copy the list in reverse order. We use two variables set lower to 1 and set upper to n. These are index variables with the names lower and upper. Then repeat n times. Notice here set t sub lower to n sub upper. We are now setting up the temporary list using the original list as a source. This is where this extra memory is appearing for the t values. 
Then we add one to lower and subtract one from upper. When this loop is finished, we will have a copy of the list in the T variables. Next, copy the list back over the original list. Set lower to 1. Repeat n times. Set our original list lower to our temporary list lower and then add one to lower. So we will now copy this temporary list back over the original list, changing the value of the original list to be in the reverse order of what it originally was. Our last version, our second version here, will reverse the list without making a copy. It will be a little more complicated a bit to understand, but it's more efficient in terms of memory usage. First we get n, the number of items in the list, and the, the items. If n is equal to 1, then the list is already in order, we stop. Otherwise, we set lower to 1, set upper to n. While lower is less than upper, first we interchange two items. To interchange two items, we have to have a temporary variable called temp here. Set temp to n lower and set n lower to n upper and then set n upper to temp. This will interchange the values of n lower and n upper. The temporary variable is required. You can play computer here and see why. If you don't have a temporary variable, it, it won't work. Next, adjust the indices. Add 1 to lower and subtract 1 from upper. So we've seen here average algorithms, Fibonacci sequence algorithms, geometry algorithms, maximum value algorithms, and reversing a list, all demonstrating how these algorithms can be defined using pseudocode.